A young woman from a small town dreams of a life much bigger than the simple life that she had always known. She decides to make a move to a much bigger city. She meets the man of her dreams and things are even better than she could have even imagined. Until suddenly that living dream becomes a living nightmare. And the man that had promised to love and protect her becomes the one thing that she would need protecting from. This is her story. Yo, I think it's maiden season for these assholes because I noticed they're walking around in twos. If you saw my Instagram story, the two that ran up on us in the street, um, it was two. And then the two that came from behind the car, they were not the same two. That was a different pair. All of them are really paired up. And then one of them is like really aggressive and like will start pecking the other one, attacking the other one and yelling in the other one's ear. And it's just a mess over here. They're about to, they're about to start multiplying. And then I found out that they're called Canadian geese. Now, I don't know if that's just the name or if they really descended from Canada. I thought they descended from hell, but apparently they might be from Canada. And if they are, I need y'all to come get y'all's birds. I need them to all retreat back to Canada because this ain't it. And they a long ass way from Canada. I tell you that. Long way from home. In April of 2012, Brandy Baggett, she moves to Greenville, North Carolina because the town that she was from, she felt like her potential was very limited and she just wanted to live somewhere where there was a lot more going on. She just wanted growth and the life that she wanted, she just felt like she could not achieve in her hometown, which I, for I forgot where it was, sorry. So she decides to move away and expand her horizons. She did not have family here or know anyone here. She just really picked up and moved out on her own. As she is venturing out, becoming more familiar with her surroundings in her new city, she's coming out of her shell. She's making friends. And among these friends is a couple that belongs to this, this car club. She's hanging out with this little, this group of friends all the time. And the couple, she really admires them because you know how some couples just really give bliss and in love and just all of the things. She really admired this about them and she wanted this for herself. Like she just thought they were the cutest little thing ever. And she wanted a bae. She wanted to be able to go on vacations and post her man holding her hand on Instagram. Brandy decides to ask the guy if he had any single friends, anybody you know that he knew that he could hook her up with. And to her surprise, he says, yes, he has the perfect guy. He has a friend named Paul who is single and ready to mingle. He shows her pictures of Paul. Oh, I got it going on. You know, Paul is cute or whatever. So hook that up. She's really excited because she is genuinely attracted to him and he appears to be and sounds like a good catch from the description that her friend gives. And I think it's kind of typical for us to feel more comfortable when it's somebody that we know and we trust and we like. That's vouching for somebody. We tend to feel a little bit more comfortable. And so that was, that was the space that she was in. He kind of came with a pre-approval. Now, he does the same with Paul. He reaches out to Paul and he expresses that he has a friend that is interested in him, shows Paul her pictures, and Paul is like, okay, she's cute, so it's mutual. He arranges for the two of them, Brandy and his friend, to meet in person and just see if the chemistry is there, if they're really, you know, feeling each other, and see if there was any chemistry between them. Because if there was, that would have been a cute situation. They could have double dated and, you know, it just would have been just would have been cute. They go out on this date, and of course, Brandy had seen his pictures already, but since that, the pictures didn't even do him justice. She said he was fine, okay? He was tall, he was handsome, he was he was just everything. Everything physically that she would want her man to be. I personally like my men, men with a little dash of ugly. I like them to be attractive, but with a dash of ugly. Like, I wanna look at you sometimes and be like, are you really cute or am I tripping, you know? That's a dangerous game I'm playing because my mama said if my kid's ugly, she's not babysitting. So, Y'all see my mama a little bit, but y'all don't know that woman. She's serious. To her credit, she did say she would babysit if she had nowhere to go. She did follow that up, though, with the somebody calls me asking if we can go somewhere. I'm going to tell them, no, nah, girl, I got this little ugly grandbaby. I'm not leaving the house today. She is terrible. But that's my girl. Not only was Paul physically good looking, he was very sweet. He was very kind. He was chivalrous. And he was much bigger than her. She said that she felt like he gave protector tees. She just felt like, you know, if something popped off in the restaurant, he was going to protect her and be her knight in shining armor. She really, really liked his masculine energy. The two began to converse and talk about their past. And when he reveals to her that he was actually raised by his grandmother and that the two were very close and had a good relationship, she just really felt like that was a really good sign. She thought that that was very sweet and telling as to how he would treat her as his woman. By the end of the day, Brandy was smitten 
and it was mutual he also liked her too like he was very attracted to her physically she was a very cute girl he liked her vibe he liked that she was from a little small city and she just gave good girl vibes he admired the fact that she had moved here on her own on the pursuit of just growth and more opportunities and things were good between the two it was a really good first date which led them to have another date and another date after that and before you know it they were spending all of their time together like they literally were inseparable brandy was not the only one who had grown to love paul no he didn't have a side piece she introduced him to her mother and her mother loved him as well. Like she really was impressed by him. She had gotten the opportunity to be around Paul and her daughter a couple of times. And she was just convinced that this was going to be her husband. She would tell Brandy like, Paul is it. Paul is going to be your husband. Like he's the one. And Brandy had also met and spent time with his grandmother as well. Whom she had begun to form her own relationship with. And she was very close with. And she just adored their relationship although it progressed kind of quickly it was going in a good direction everything was really good and although she felt like things were kind of moving fast she didn't see any red flags things were going so well that you know she just didn't mind she really didn't have too many reservations because things were good and life in general was good for brandy she really felt like deciding to move to this city was the best decision that she really could have made for herself and then asking her friend if he had a single friend was was the second best decision she could have made or so so it seemed a couple of months go by and the two remain inseparable things are still going really well for them they feel like they've really really gotten to know each other well and decide that they want to move in together by this time brandy was spending pretty much all of her time with paul if she was not at work she was at home with paul at first because she was so in love with him and infatuated with him this wasn't a problem for her. They were in the honeymoon stages and she actually preferred to spend most of her time with her men. Y'all know what we get when we get a new, a new little boo. So we start getting tired of the ass. A few months into them living together and spending literally every moment together, Brandy's still very much in love with Paul, but she begins to miss hanging out with her friends. She's like, this is cute, but I miss my girls. She missed having a social life. It had pretty much become non-existent since she and Paul had began dating. She wanted to get back out there and enjoy her homegirls. She tells Paul about this and he's like, oh, okay, I understand. But every time that she tells him that she has made plans with a friend, he would tell her, oh, I've made plans for us for that day. I just hadn't told you because it was a surprise. I was trying to surprise you. This would always result in her canceling plans with the friends or postponing the plans and then going forward with Paul's plans, which would oftentimes consist of just watching a movie at home or simply going to dinner somewhere. Now, at first, Brandy didn't question whether or not he was lying or being truthful about having made plans ahead of time on the particular day that she had just so happened to make plans with her girls. But after it happened a couple of times, and in each instance, it was something like watching a movie at home, going to the movies, going to dinner, she was like, you know what? This don't seem like something that was pre-planned, sir. It became very, very apparent and very obvious to her that sis just wanted, wanted her all to himself. He hadn't planned nothing. He just knew that if he said so, she would not go out and instead they could just do something at the house. He just simply did not want her hanging out and that's all that it was. She suspected that this was the case and it was really confirmed for her when one instance, they didn't even do anything at all. He was just sitting on the couch. He didn't even put a movie on, no Netflix, nothing. It's like, so what were the plans? Brandy decides to confront him about it and she's like, you know what? None of the things that we have done appear to be pre-planned at all. It was very obvious that there was no forethought whatsoever. And she does not appreciate this at all. You know what he does? He attempts to gaslight her by acting upset and saying that she always ruins their plans or ruins his mood for their plans by letting him know that she had made plans on that day. And this particular evening, he was so upset that he just didn't even feel like doing anything anymore, which is why they didn't do anything. She had just ruined it. She had ruined the night. He was over it. So dramatic. We might realize that this sounds like some BS, but it actually works because in that moment, Brandy did not realize what was happening. And she began to question herself, like, am I tripping? Am I being ridiculous? Am I overthinking it? 
maybe it's me this is the relationship that she always wanted these are the things that she came here for and the last thing she wanted to do was sabotage it with frivolous ridiculous ideas she was happy he was happy everything was great was she about to now ruin it being dramatic and overthinking like these are the these are the questions that she's asking herself paul is the man that she wants to marry she has envisioned the rest of their life together she decides that self-sabotaging is the last thing that she wants to do to this situation and so she puts the thoughts that he is actually doing this on purpose or that he has any ill intent in the back of her mind. But still, she had this feeling that something just was not right. No matter how much she tried to convince herself that it was her. And that she was just overthinking things and being ridiculous. This feeling, it never leaves her. Over the next couple months, Paul begins to become more and more controlling. But in a very subtle way. He would try to control the things that she wore. But not outright telling her like, you can't wear that. I don't like you wearing this. He would tell her, you know, I prefer to see you in this and see you in that. Which, in my opinion, it's okay to express to your partner what you prefer. Or what you really feel they look best in. But Paul would become visibly agitated if she didn't adhere to his opinions like if she felt like oh well no i'm aware it i like it it was then a problem he would then become a little sassy he would have a little attitude and it wasn't just about what she wore he also would at first tell her that he liked her makeup a certain way and he went from telling her that he liked less to not liking makeup at all and would become a little pissy if and when she decided to wear it to the point that she decided you know what? I'm just not going to wear it. Like, I ain't got time today for Paul's attitude. In an effort to please her partner, Brandy is adhering to all of his requests, all of his preferences. She felt like with relationships come compromise, right? Of course, relationships are not easy. She was willing to do some of the hard work to make sure things went, went good. She didn't mind being a little bit uncomfortable to please her partner. She felt like he just... He just liked her to look a certain way. Is there really anything, anything wrong with that? She wanted him to be attracted to her, so she just felt like it wasn't that big of a deal. Even though she recognized that with these changes, she was feeling less like herself and compromising her own comfort and happiness to appease him. She was feeling like she was losing a bit of her identity and that she just wasn't allowed to be Brandy. That's really the only problem that she had with it, but then she would, of course, question whether or not she was being ridiculous or if he was really asking for too much. Over time, this really results in a shift in her personality and her overall happiness. She's not as happy as she once was, and things just were not as fun anymore. She wasn't the only one changing, though. She was also noticing changes in Paul as well, changes that really, really scared her. They began having disagreements more often and over the smallest little things. And in these disagreements, Paul would become very upset. Now, when he would become upset with her, or the two would disagree or have an argument, he would physically like grab her arms. What started out as a light grab quickly progressed to a much more forceful one. Now, 10 months into the relationship, Paul is a completely different person than she had believed him to be. The two will argue about the most frivolous of things. The, the smallest thing would set him off. Even when they weren't arguing, he was just unnecessarily mean. And when the two argued, he was very, very mean. Like, he was extremely condescending and would give more than what than what needed to be given in the first place. He would hit below the belt. And during one of the arguments, Brandy literally asked him, like, am I going to have to deal with this the rest of my life? Is this what the rest of our lives together looks like? Like, let me know. When she asks him this, he grabs her by the neck and says, bitch, I'll take your life right now. He does not let go of her. At this point, she's choking and questioning, like, how the hell did we even get here? She's also questioning herself, like, did she do anything that got them to this point? Like, is she that triggering? She just brings this out of him, like, what is it? Nobody knows stress like a woman trying to make her eyeliner match the other side. I'm telling you right now. She is also wondering if there's something that she could do to get them out of this. Can we fix this? Like, what can I do to fix this and get us back to where we were? But then she, she snaps out of it. 
She's like, no, this is not my fault. Like, this man is just crazy. And I need to get away from him altogether. She knew that if she decided to leave Paul, it would not be an easy task. Sis was not about to just let her walk out the front door and be done with him. He had that little Ike Turner spirit on him. She just was not quite sure how she should go about it. Paul knew where she worked, of course. He knew where all of her friends lived. He even knew where her family out of town lived. But she felt like there was really nowhere that she could just go and be done with him that he could not come and find her. There would be no escaping Paul in her mind. Furthermore, she had become estranged from her family and her friends anyway because he had already obviously alienated her from her friends. But not only that, he had caused her to pull back from her family as well. He had kind of guilted her into feeling like she was giving them a lot of her time, that, you know, she spent too much time talking to them on the phone versus spending time with him when she wasn't at work. She no longer felt as strongly connected to her family as she once did. So that also kind of deterred her from reaching out to them and using them as an ally and an avenue to help her get away from this crazy man. In the preceding months, she simply hadn't done anything but literally go to work, come home to Paul. Like, that was it. She wasn't on the phone. She wasn't out in the streets. She wasn't on Instagram. None of the things. Speaking of Instagram, y'all, when she returned home from work every day, Paul would take her keys and her cell phone from her and he would hold on to them until it was time for her to go to work again. That's how bad it had gotten. Like, she went from being in this whirlwind romance with Paul, this tall, handsome man, to being a prisoner of Paul's in less than a year. Paul would also force her to engage in sex with him, and this quickly escalated to just full-blown assault. And what was most disturbing about it is the fact that he appeared to be more aroused when it was forced than when it was consensual which was really disturbing to, to me and Brandy. She felt like it was easier for her to just give in and just not fight him, just allow him to have his way. Punk ass Paul. One morning that this had happened, Brandy was at her breaking point. She really was just completely fed up. Afterward, he got up like nothing had happened. Well, nothing wrong had happened. He proceeded to the kitchen to do some handiwork underneath the sink. Just went on about his business. And shortly after this, Brandy goes into the kitchen. She sees him there halfway underneath the kitchen sink. And she also sees this big old pipe wrench sitting there on the toolbox. For a minute, she contemplates getting that thing and knocking him upside his head. Sis is looking at him. Then she's looking at the, the wrench and looking back at him and contemplating knocking the shit out of him. Because the way he was bent over under that sink, she could have very well hit him in the back of the head, child, and been done. He would have been done too. <sighs> I'm getting upset. Suddenly, there's a knock at the door that interrupts these thoughts, unfortunately. He had not noticed she was there. He takes his big ass head from underneath the sink and sees her and he's like, why are you just standing there? Make yourself useful. Open the door. Like, baby, you were almost up out of here. You need to relax. I know we done all had the moments where we looking at somebody and we just like, you just don't know how close you were to be needing help up off of this floor right now. Okay? Relax. She goes toward the door and it's actually their landlady. I guess God said, ah, ah, it's a better way, sis. Hold on. I got you. She steps outside to talk to the landlady and immediately bursts into tears and tells her not only what had happened that morning, but pretty much a little synopsis of the bullshit that she's been dealing with over the past couple months and how she was terrified of this man and that she just wanted to leave, but she was too afraid to. She completely breaks down. The landlady consoles her and also calls the police. The police arrive fairly quickly and punk ass Paul is arrested. They take him down to the jail. Child, had that been me, the landlady would have been calling the police on me instead of for me. First, Brandy is feeling very relieved. She feels like she is close to this whole nightmare just being over and being behind her. However, she does know that this will not be the last that she sees of Paul. But she was relieved with him being in jail at the moment. A moment that she thought would last much longer than it did. His friend bonds him out of jail the very next day. Brandy didn't even know that he had been bonded out she is out driving her car the next day and all of a sudden there he is in her rearview mirror. Oh, she notices him following her and at first that's that's just the extent of it. 
But then I guess when he notices that she's watching, he begins to pull up to her car extra close, all up on her bumper, just trying to intimidate her and scare her, just being a jerk, per usual. And she is, of course, stunned to see his ass and also afraid of where this is going. She comes up on a stop sign and decides to use this opportunity to sit still for a second and just call the police. Child would have led you right to my cousin house. He would have whipped your ass in the yard. I'm just saying. Oh, not, not me having primer all in my hair. Y'all ain't tell me, girl. I thought we was friends. Help me. When she does this, he pulls up on her left side. He rolls his window down, gives her this this weird, creepy, evil grin, and also the peace sign, and then pulls off. She knows Paul well enough to know that this is literally, this is just the beginning. And that's probably just a warning. She decides the best thing to do is just go get a restraining order on him. She does so, and then she also decides that it's probably a good idea for her to move out of the home that the two had shared together. Even though he had not come back to the house, she just, of course, didn't feel safe being there and him just having having access to her and knowing where she is. You were gonna find me, baby. You were gonna have to look for me for a little while at least. You might know where all my people at, but you, you don't know whose house I'm at, okay? The things that she did not want to take with her, she lists for sale online and begins packing up everything else that she did want to take. However, she is, of course, too afraid to sleep at the home because of obvious reasons. And so at night, she will go to a friend's house. She spends the next couple of days with friends, like at their houses where she felt like she would be a little more safe than being at her home. Since that day, running into him on the road, she had not even seen Paul. He had not attempted to pop up at her job, pop up at a friend's house. He hadn't even attempted to call her phone or text her, just nothing. It was radio silence. This made her feel a little more safe and secure that maybe like maybe he's going on about his business maybe i can return to the house and so she decides to do so he also did not have his keys so with that she felt like she might have been a little safe like she might be okay for the time being until moving day she returns to her house she winds down and it's a quiet evening eventually she falls asleep and the next morning at precisely 8 a.m., she receives a text. It's a number that she doesn't recognize, but the person is inquiring about the couch that she had listed for sale, and they're just simply asking, is the couch still available? She does not respond right away, but after a couple of moments go by that she has not responded, her phone rings, and it's the number. She greets the caller with a nice little hello, but nobody says anything. Like, the phone is just silent. She says hello a couple more times and still nothing so she holds the phone just a little bit longer she's like hello again and still nobody says anything but right before she hangs up the phone she hears someone say i love you brandy immediately she recognizes the voice as paul's it's his crazy ass now immediately after this before she can even hang up or have any kind of response she hears some commotion outside she goes to the window to see like what's going on and it's paul the door is locked he is realizing the door is locked and becoming upset and when he does he proceeds to try to kick the door in I told y'all paul was he was a pretty big guy so he succeeds in doing so she tries to run from him and hide but of course he finds her grabs her she's much smaller than him he takes her outside and throws her into his truck he locks the doors he's very very enraged and not only that sis got a gun he begins banging his head on the steering wheel over and over like a maniac and she is terrified as any of us would be after just a few moments of them sitting there in the car and him banging his head on the steering wheel he takes off he takes off with her right there on the passenger side and she has no idea where he's taking her to she realizes that of course he has the upper hand in this situation and so she decides that her best bet is probably to just try to de-escalate the situation, to calm him down and just convince him to let her go. She is telling him that things can go back to the way that they were, that it just didn't even have to be all of this. They can go back to being the happy couple that they once were. She is still in love with him. She still cares about him. She still wants to try to make it work. She doesn't feel like they're beyond repair. Now, during all of this, Paul is not saying a word. He is just looking straight ahead and driving and still huffing and puffing slightly he's still still upset and he keeps driving for three hours 
this way. Like, he eventually calms down a little bit, but he never says anything. Nothing at all. Doesn't open his mouth. Doesn't look over her. Nothing. After the three hours, they pull up at this vacant house. And the house, she knows, is owned by his family, but nobody lives there. And it's kind of, it's kind of in a very isolated area. And nobody is around, of course. There's nothing going on and um this is this is very concerning for her because she doesn't know what's on his mind he's been riding in silence for three hours she doesn't know what he's thinking he obviously has a plan though but it doesn't look like it's a plan that's gonna work out in her best favor she is not only concerned that she's not gonna make it out of this alive but also that nobody would even find her here like who would know to look for her there this was all that was on her mind like I'm literally not about to live through this and nobody will ever find me. He takes her into the house and in another desperate attempt to just change his mind and save herself, she initiates sex with him. And this kind of seems to calm him down a little bit. Like they, they, they do that. They have their adult exchange and he is a lot more calm, but he's still not all that responsive. She is hopeful that this has convinced him that she's willing to work it out and that they could, you know, just return and then she could just really get away from him. But he's still obviously very off. Like there's something very, very off and weird about him. He's still very distant and has a demeanor that she just had never witnessed from him before. So she really didn't know how to read it. At this point, she is just She's just hopeful. Yeah, just a little bit, a little bit more. Paul then, out of nowhere, takes out his phone and calls his grandmother. Brandy hears him tell his grandmother to come to the house right away. And she doesn't know why he's doing this or what's on his mind, what, what's the purpose of all of this. But to her, this is kind of a good sign. She felt like, okay, if grandmother comes out, maybe she can convince him. Maybe he won't do anything too crazy in front of his grandmother. Like, hopefully. In the meantime, the two of them are just sitting, waiting on her to arrive. Eventually, she does. It takes her two hours to travel there. For two hours, she's sitting in suspense and fear. At the point at which the grandmother does arrive, though, Paul is now armed with two firearms. He's pulled out a second one from somewhere. His grandmother is speaking to him calmly. She's trying to reassure him that, you know, everything will be okay. Just, you know, don't do anything. Don't do anything crazy or... She then asks him to allow her to just take one of them. Just hand me one of those, which he agrees to do so. He calmly hands over one to her. Sis knew that her grandson wasn't right. She knew. I think that Fred knew too. But let me just keep going with the story. We can talk after the fact. But I will say right now that I believe Sis knew he wasn't right. She should have locked his ass in a dungeon and slid his meals under the door. She knew someone wasn't right with that boy. But this ain't her fault. So I ain't gonna give her too much. But once this happens, Paul's phone rings and it's his friend telling him that he is all over the news, that the news is looking for Brandy and they suspected that he has her and something is up. This sends Paul right back up to 100. Okay, they have worked Paul down to about a 25, but this sent him right back into his anger and his rage and just his unstable self. Well, he's been unstable the whole time. Now see, Brandy was supposed to be at work that day. And when she did not show up, a friend of hers that worked with her and that she'd also told about like the history with Paul and the restraining order and just everything. The friend was very concerned and alerted the police saying that, you know, she didn't show up for work and she's very concerned that Paul had done something to her. He takes the one gun that he does have and he points it at Brandy. Immediately, she tries to convince him that, look, we said that we're going to get back together. I will drop all of the charges. Like, we can make this whole thing go away. You don't have to do anything crazy. Like, this is not beyond being fixed. She says that she will recant her entire story. She will take back the restraining order situation. She'll clear this whole, whole thing up with the news and the police and tell them that the two of them had decided to just go away last minute, like, spur of the moment. Let's just get away for a minute. And she just didn't call in to work and let them know. And that this whole thing was a big misunderstanding. Paul hands her the phone and tells her to call the police station right now. Like, get to doing it. Do it. Here you go. Come on. Make it happen. She has to get in contact with the police, of course, from their, their, little, their little town three hours away. So when she gets them on the phone, she's like, hey, you know, I've been made privy to what's on the news. 
Um, everything is fine. There's literally nothing going on. You can call the search off. I'm perfectly fine. I'm perfectly safe. While she is doing this though, she is terrified that the police are just gonna take her word for it and literally call off the search and that Paul is gonna actually hurt her and she won't be found. But in that moment, I mean, what else was there to do? Like, she didn't really feel like she, she had a choice to do anything else. The detective that she speaks with is like, oh, that's great to hear, what a relief. But we gonna need you to come down to the station and tell us that face to face. You have to come down here in person and give this statement and clear this up. We don't do over the phone, poo. Do you know how relieved Brandy was to hear him take his response in the direction? She tells the police officer, that's not a problem. I'm on the way. They hang up the phone and then Brandy and his grandmother try to convince him to allow the grandmother to take her down to the station, get everything cleared up and everything will be fine. They'll get back together, he'll move back in, she'll take the couch off the Craigslist and all of the things. They leave the house and Brandy goes with the grandmother to the police station to clear everything up. But of course, this gets in there and tells them the truth and also where they can pick Paul's ass up at. Honey, I was determined to use one of these liners today, okay? And I'm going to use it. I'm going to use a little bit of the white one. Now, I guess Paul was not completely convinced that Brandy really was going to just come back and everything was going to be okay. And so while they're gone, he calls his birth mother. He reaches out to her and calls her to the house. She attempts to talk him down a little bit, calm him down, change his mind about just being nuts. Then all of a sudden the police arrive and he's back up at 100 again. He's refusing to come out. He is threatening his own life at this point. The police are talking to him through a PA system from outside of the house and his mother is on the inside also trying to talk him down, but it's not really working. He's refusing to come outside. He's saying he is not going to be taken alive. Not today, not any other day. His mother is still trying to change his mind and calm him but his mother is unable to convince her son to surrender and go peacefully all of a sudden police hear a single gunshot and then moments later his mother comes running out of the house screaming because of course she's traumatized her son had taken his life right in front of her now initially when news broke that that was the outcome Brandy felt she felt terrible about it but she did come to realize that this was not because of anything that she had done nor was there anything she could do to prevent it from happening like it's not your fault sis the whole ordeal was quite traumatizing to her and it took some time for her to of course get over it and get her peace back and she definitely does she's able to move on with her life and that is pretty much the end of the story but i ain't finished my makeup so i'm about to keep talking for a minute I noticed y'all don't really mind that and I don't ever want to do it because I'm just like girl I don't want to ramble y'all don't be wanting to hear hear me I know a couple of y'all was worried girl y'all worried about this white this is the thing though about makeup nine times out of ten things get bad before before they get better so try to keep going even when it's messed up a lot of times I sit here y'all like last video honestly I love the look in the end but there was a point at which mother was scared like I said I didn't think the palette was gonna be that the color was gonna be that deep and it turned out to be and I'm like girl you did more than I asked but that's okay we're gonna work it out so just keep going see it to the end a lot of times I keep going and it turns out real cute I told y'all in the last video that I ordered Tammy Clark's Chasing Butterflies palette because you know I like to try to support people who I like now when I saw she had released her own little palette I was like oh I gotta support sis and I also got some of these little these little liners these were the ones that I was talking about when I first got it I really didn't pay attention to the fact that she had said that they were water activated I was just thinking it was just a little cream liner I put my little brush in it and nothing happened but then I had to go back and look at her video where she explained and used them and I like them you put a little bit of water in there swirl their brush around and baby everything i'm gonna have to get some more because i ordered five to start with i don't know if you can really see the color i ordered a total of five to start with and so far i'm pleased i played with the bright yellow one last night it was real cute and let me show y'all when it dries down it don't even move like girl look, look at that y'all know i love eyeliner that's gonna stay put yes ma'am i feel like ash catch him now pokemon gotta catch them all gotta have them all y'all know what has really been a moment for me lately now Cher has always been that girl she always has been that girl and she still is but her 60s makeup looks have been 
a vibe for me lately. She has been an entire mood for me. And y'all want to know what Melissa told me? I was giving in the last video. If you're new here, you don't know Melissa is my sister. She's been on the channel a lot. And I always call her by name because I just assume that everybody knows who she is. Even in the comment section, I'm like, what if people are like, who the hell is Melissa? Melissa is my very vertically challenged sister. She is only 5'2". And this helper going to tell me that I was giving Elf in the last video. Now, she did compliment it. She said she liked it a lot, the green look. It was so cute. And then she said, you look like a little Elf. Girl, you the one that's 5'2", baby. The Elves are your people, not mine. But you my sister and I love you, so I ain't gonna give you too much. You did compliment it at first. Oh, girl, when I went to the emojis and looked at the elf, I was like, oh, I am kind of giving, huh? Just a little bit. That's crazy. Let me tell y'all how I ended up doing a survivor story today instead of what I had planned on doing. You know, I didn't upload anything last week. And the week before that, I had uploaded Tuesday's video and had completely done all the notes for Thursday's video. My little research for Thursday's video that I had planned went a little over and then some other things came up. As a result of all of that, I ended up finishing the research for the video late on Wednesday night. And I was excited about the video because it's so interesting. It's a very interesting story. And I'm like, oh, this is gonna be some tea. It was a really interesting story to return to the whole serial killer thing, right? Y'all, the story was so interesting, it is so interesting, right? I was so excited to do it, even though I had to get up super early and film and edit all in the same day to get it to you on time. But then that morning comes and some BS comes up and mother is unable to, to film that morning. I decided to get on here, make my community post and let y'all know that I just needed a couple days. Like I just needed to pull my shit together. But I was like, you know what, it's fine. It'll be a Thursday video for it when I return. Why am I perusing through these YouTube streets after my return? Cruising through these YouTube streets in my six bow. Just browsing, trying to see what I had missed. And all of a sudden, I see a name and a video title that looks so familiar. For a millisecond, I question, why did the name look so familiar? Y'all ain't gonna bother to tell you that. Bailey's recent upload, her last Monday video, was on that guy. Same guy, same case. And this is not a well-known case, so I was just like, ugh. Clutching my pearls. And mind you, it's the night before I'm set to film it because I hadn't filmed it yet I just completed all of the notes I don't know if I'm supposed to leave the top off and allow this to just completely dry down or leak I would assume so now the thing is it's a very interesting case and mother is still gonna do the video because I didn't do all their research for nothing okay I'm not gonna watch ours before I film mine rather I don't want to, you know, muddy the waters. I was upset. I'm like, it's the night before I'm supposed to film. Like, what the fuck am I going to do at this point? Some cases we have both covered, one of which we uploaded on the same day. I uploaded mine and then later that same day she uploaded hers. But for the most part, though, we haven't done a lot of the same cases. And I'm just like, this is just too close. Like, this would just be too, too back to back. I didn't want that. A lot of y'all, as far as the cases, have made it very clear that y'all don't care how many videos that are here in these youtube streets about the case you still want me to do it if i want to do it you still want to hear my commentary so i am still gonna do it like i said baby i ain't do all that work for nothing i have a running list of like people that you guys have suggested or like people that I know I want to do a video on. And so initially I went straight for that list and I was like, I'm just going to have to literally put together a video, but it's kind of unrealistic. Like it literally is the night before. I don't like to rush it. I like to take my time and research. I like to look at this documentary, look at that girl, if it's interviews, watch those girls. I like to try to look and see if it's a TV show about it. Look at several different websites and not just one because sometimes they have conflicting information. Like it takes, it takes time. It really does take time. And I really, really did not feel comfortable rushing research. And I didn't want to go without uploading because I've been having fun. Like, I enjoy being back. Y'all really showed up on my last video in the comment section. Baby. Like, I love y'all. I miss y'all. I actually miss editing. This is the thing. I enjoy every part of this from the research to the filming to the editing. And then after a while, though, kind of got sick of the editing. I'm like, girl, this sometimes it's just a lot. Sometimes. You don't feel like it. I enjoy it all, but that part is the least enjoyable part of it. But even Tuesday's video, when I sat down to even edit, like I had fun. My memory ran out again, so I don't know where I was just now. But luckily for mother, I had this last survivor story complete in the chamber. It's still really fresh in my mind. And so we just gonna pull her out. 
Am I the only one that when they see themselves on like the security cameras in a store, like catch a glance, they imagine that being the little video they clip if they ever went disappearing, honey, and them being like, she was last seen at Walmart buying Cheetos at 2.38 a.m. Like, bitch, I actually bought gas after that, but y'all ain't gonna... Y'all ain't gonna mention that, of course. I can hear my mama now. She was supposed to be on a damn diet. Look at her buying Cheetos in the middle of the night. Like, girl, I'd be down there with my kidnapper like, you see this shit? You see how they tried to play me? And now here you go, got me in a dungeon. Y'all really all got me fucked up. One of you nice, sweet young ladies hit my Instagram DMs and sent me the sweetest video. She was so cute. She recreated a look that I had done and she looked absolutely gorgeous. I love when you guys tag me and send me stuff that y'all did that I did. I feel like, girl, my looks ain't even all that, but thank you, you know? <laughs> thank you. Y'all make me feel so good. The video was so sweet. It made my whole day. It really did. Like, I really love y'all so much. Y'all really be making my day, and some of y'all are funny as hell. No matter how many times I open up YouTube Studio, crotch pockets will never get old. Somebody said the Pisces were, were literally the worst and that they had just given birth to one. Y'all really have no idea how you make me laugh and how much I appreciate y'all, especially y'all that have been rocking with me forever. Y'all show up to everything. I don't care if I do a bring it to Britney. I don't care if it's a Q and A. Hell, if I wanted to upload a video to file my nails down and say the ABCs forwards and backwards, it's some of y'all that just, just show up. The live streams, just everything. And I really appreciate y'all, like for real. Because it's some of y'all that literally are gonna show up to everything. Like Sarah, Sarah, you changed your profile picture on me, girl. I almost didn't recognize you. Josh, Josh likes blue, always gonna show up, always down in the comment section. It's a lot of y'all. Emmy, Ash and Emmy, Donna Bell. I hadn't seen Donna Bell in a minute. I don't know if you changed your your name and picture, girl, but if you out there, let me know. Cause I I literally been a little wary, girl. Nadia Rose, Lisa, I think it's Oh, I don't want to butcher nobody's name. I know it's over 50s in the name. Sorry if I got it wrong. Honey, Chihuahua Dreams. It's a couple of CJs out there. All of them female. That's not weird. I'm not judging. I think that's cute. But I'm just I'm just saying. Um, who else do I see out there a lot? It's a lot of y'all. Heather, Nick Nack, Nicole, MK Hogan, I see her all the time. Who else? Diamond, Katie Cakes, who was apparently the only person that caught the tea on the catfish that day in the live stream. My soul sister fairy was pretty much a promoter of the channel at this point, like a a, a, a whole promoter, whole promoter, okay? Uh, there's somebody, Flutter by, I think, I know it's Flutter in the name, and a butterfly. It's a couple of Elizabeths and a couple of Amandas too, because. Amanda is one of my sister's names, and I always see that name. D. Hall be in the comment section a lot. Kennedy Myers TV, that's my girl. Shout out to you. Who else? Shay. Shay Christiana. I think it's Christiana or Christina. Girl, if it's wrong, y'all know I'm getting old. Charge it to my, my head and not my heart. Tori now. I don't know why I want to say Tori Bricks. That's a whole rapper. I think it's Bryce. I'm not sure. I'm getting old, like I said. I'm so sorry about it. XO, Primrose, Alyssa, or is it Eliza? I don't know, but it's two of y'all. In the little avatar, look like y'all might be on a boat. And who else? Lady Good Speaks, always in the comment section. I just love y'all so much. It's more y'all. If I didn't say your name, I'm so sorry. I didn't plan on, you know, running down the list. But these are just people that I just always see in the comment section. Who I've been seeing forever. And they just literally just always going to support. And it's, it's more of y'all. It's people who just got here. Who comment all the time. Who share videos, like videos. Uh, Y'all don't get me started on Twitter. Sarah from Bed Off Red, she's very supportive. D, Twitter, uh, Fairly Odd, Fairly Odd Boy, I think that's his name on Twitter. Tori on Twitter is always sharing all of the things. Not Tori, Tina, it's Tina. Kendra, y'all, I could go on and on all day, honestly. But mother is hungry, and the more names I say, the, the worse I'm kind of feeling, because I'm just like, I don't want anybody to feel left out. I don't want nobody to be like, bitch, I've been commenting for two years, okay? Every day. You ain't you ain't say my name. Honey, Jenny up in New York, my New York bestie, El Chapo, always in the comment section. Adela. Baby, let me tell you something about Adela. Y'all better watch out for her if y'all came in to hate. Sis will gather you like Easter eggs on Easter Sunday. Girl, sometimes I see in the comments and I'm like, Lord have mercy. Or Adela have mercy, somebody. Regardless of whether or not I said your name, child, I love you if you're here and you support me and you comment. I love y'all so much. You know what? And I thought a couple of y'all were cool until y'all showed up on Instagram claiming my man, Kofi, is y'all's. So 
I ain't forgot. I reported y'all page is the Instagram. So I know a lot of y'all haven't been deleted yet. It might take some time. They might not. They might not delete it. But just know if I ever see you out here in these streets, it's on site. And then we can be cool after still. But I just got to let you know that I don't tolerate disrespect about my man. And he's mine. You may have had him once, but I got him all the time. And so I just need you to know that and respect that. That's all I got. And you know what I love most about y'all? Like as a collective, the comment section be popping. Like y'all, y'all are so supportive and y'all say kind of things to me and each other. And it's just, I love to see it. I genuinely love to see it. So to every last one of y'all, whether I said your name or not, I appreciate you if you are here. I love you so much. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for spending time with me and I will see you in the next one. Peace. She makes the move to a bigger city. And then what happened? <sighs> Take 63. She makes the... <sighs> now my words get stuck. A man that had promised to blood of that. What? Girl, what he promised to do? One more. One more run through. One more. I think I got an even better one in me. A young woman from a... Okay. No. She moves to Greenville, South Carolina. No, Greenville, North Carolina. Is that Greenville, South Carolina, though? It is, child. That ain't where she lives. Sets up a blind date between the two, which is it really blind if they saw each other's pictures already? Because I thought blind date was like, blind date. Like, you ain't seen them yet. Move into this, the city, the city. What? Self sub. Oh, sabotaging. I was just going to switch the little vows, child. She decides to self sabotage for the yeah. Who are you? Rude. Sir, we know you got a Camaro. Relax. Take your little thought mobile and go. Girl, the Velcro is ganking on my little kitchen. And it's it's in a bro yeah, go with this word I cannot say. It's kinda in this rural rural. Child. I'm not gonna do this. Hey Siri, what's another word for? Now I'm gonna say it. Uh, never mind, Siri girl. I don't even know how to say it to you. Let's try rural, rural. Okay, I found this on the web for what's another word for namaste a don. Never mind. Let's try rural. Check it out. I can't even be mad at you, girl, because I did say all of that. <sighs> it's in a very isolated area. Took my edges, baby. Oh, I got a wig on. They can get they can get foundation on me today. I'm good. Tell his brand uh, grandmother brand. Brandy hears him tell his brand. I was gonna say grandmother again. What's going on? I was just thinking it was just a. a yeah. Oh shit! I gotta get the thumbnail. Let me try to let me try to put on my Naomi camel and whip out a thumbnail.